this is the independence where we're taking stock of robots, automation, and artificial intelligence. Going robot will cause some ill effects on the economy. But can we overcome the crush? Lori Sanders is a senior fellow at R Street Institute. And Lori, you have been documenting the rise of the, of the machines from an economic perspective. Are we screwed? What is automation? What are robots doing to our productivity and economic growth? Well, so on the productivity front, the news is actually good. I think robots and mechanization has um, increased U.S. productivity a lot. Um, the downside then is, yes, at times it displaces workers. So the good news right now is that we're not seeing people flee en masse. There's not some massive displacement from the labor force by robots. But there are things we should probably be wary about in the future. So what should we be worried about? I mean, what does the near future hold that could be pretty bleak if it's not kept in check? So I don't know that we necessarily need to think about keeping things in check from a technological perspective, right? I mean, we want technology to change. We want as consumers to have access to new services, well, we to new products. we also want to grow. So how do we right. do that? So I think what we really need to think carefully about is um, how are we training workers? How are we making sure that people get the skills that they need to work in the new economy? And that's something I think that we're actually doing pretty poorly at. I think that's one of the reasons you've seen people get displaced is that there are just too many barriers keeping people out of work while high skill jobs and people who are able to get on that track are doing incredibly well. We've sort of seen something like this play out in the country before. I mean, there was a time when most people were farmers and then the Industrial Revolution took place. Is that what we're expecting? Expecting to see again, or do we expect the change to be much more dramatic this go around? Oh yeah, is it a post-service economy? So there are definitely some people that um, Tyler Cowen is one of them, right? He just wrote a book, Average is Over, which is fantastic. That really does have sort of more dire predictions. You know that technology will increase so rapidly this time that you will see structural unemployment, which isn't something that you saw in the past, right? In the past, when technology would displace workers, workers would go into new industries, new things would prop up that people had never even imagined before, and that's good. The fear is that technology changes rapidly enough that the economy can't keep up, and then you do see, you know, hordes of the unemployed wandering the fields like looking, looking for work, right, exactly. And, it, and, and at least part of what Tyler is saying is that we, we've sort of plucked the low-hanging fruit of, of innovation. You can only invent refrigeration one time, you get that big bang, and most of what we're getting now, the benefits are accruing to folks who are technologically proficient. Right, and so I don't, um, I'm an optimist. I try not to be as, as dire as, as Tyler is in the predictions, although um, he's certainly an incredibly smart person and far smarter than I am. Um, but if you look at the past as an example, right, you see that um, things that you never thought of before are, are happening. So I like to think that there are all sorts of things that Tyler just isn't envisioning that no one can envision because it's in someone's brain, you know, in Wichita, Kansas, or, you know, pick your um, small city in the heartland, right, and that that person has an idea that's going to all of a sudden launch an entire new industry. Um, that's what we've seen in the past, and hopefully that's what we'll see again. But again, you have to have the right regulatory structure, and people need the training that they um, that the job will require. Okay, but we, we hear about, uh, quickly, I just want to ask this question. We hear about a lot of technical positions needing to be filled, welders, plumbers, things like that. Are too many people in college? Do we need to retrain them to do what are considered blue-collar jobs? I do think we, we see a, a big mismatch in the labor force right now. There's, um, you know, sort of at the lower end, there's um, sort of a mismatch of people just really having the skills necessary to go out, like get a job. You know, my father-in-law runs a factory and is constantly complaining about sort of the lack of, of people that he, he finds employable. And then, yeah, we send way too many people to college to get degrees that are completely unnecessary. They, you know, end up finding jobs that would have required some college, but not really a degree. We had a, uh, one of your fellow optimists on earlier, Robin Hansen, and mm -hmm. he used a, a phrase that I actually found quite chilling, which is that robots will allow humanity to retire. Do we want humanity to retire? Is that a good thing? We just sort of sit around, we stop procreating, and the robots do everything? Oh, else? yeah, then we become like the fat people in the. Or, or idiocracy or whatever. Right. I don't think we want humanity to retire. I think, you know, part of part of human nature is that we have this desire to be creative. We want to express ourselves. But what we want is, you know, the robots to take the jobs that nobody wants. We want people to be able to occupy their time, you know, creating art, creating whatever it is that makes them feel fulfilled. I'm glad you were here. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Come on, you know you have.